So hello, in this blender tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this chandelier. You can make it any color, any shape, any size, however you want. I'm just going to teach you how to make the rough shape. So without any further ado, let's hop straight into it. First thing we're going to do, or that I'm going to do, is enable my screen cost keys. So you can see everything I'm doing down here at the bottom. Next up, let's press A, X and delete. For the next part, we're going to make the bars that go going from the top to the bottom. So let's press Shift A and add in a cylinder. The number of vertices is going to define the number of bars that you have. So from my example, I have used 128. Next up, what we're going to do is to scale it down on the Z axis only. So S, Z, and make it roughly this shape. Next up, let's go into edge selection mode. So next up, press Ctrl, Alt and right click or left click depending on what you have set for selection. Next up press Ctrl and B. That is Ctrl and B. Let's press Ctrl B and bevel it to right about here. This is going to determine the width of your bars. Next up switch into face selection mode to make the selection to faces. Press Ctrl I and now we should have successfully selected everything that are not the bars and we can delete that. Now that we are left with only that, we can tap out of edit mode and add in a new cylinder. This one we're going to scale down even more on the z-axis, until right about here. Next up, go into edit mode, press Ctrl R and add in an edge shot. Right click to set it back to its original point and bevel it out. To right about here, this is going to be a ring that is holding all the bars together. Next up, go into face selection mode again. Shift click on those two faces, X and delete. Now those faces are all overlapping. That is absolutely no issue at all. Let's press A, Ctrl A, and then scale. Now we should have applied the scale to every object, the bars and the ring. So now let's select the ring, go to the modifiers, and add in a solidify modifier. Now the default setting for me is fine, you can tweak it if you want. Next up I'm going to add a bevel, and note that in 2.92 it's automatically set to angle for the limit method, which I do like. So let's make the... not the angle, <laughs> let's make the amount smaller, to right about here. Oops. And I'm going to give mine 4 segments, that is what I like the most. And now we can just select the bars, then shift click on the railing, then control L and modifiers. That is going to copy both modifiers to the bars. Next up you're going to notice that uh, they are going in the same direction and therefore overlapping with this even more. What we can do is, when we select the bars, just change the offset to be positive 1. And now they should be on the outside. So next up. What we're going to do is press Shift A again and add in yet another cylinder. And this one we're going to scale without any um, constraints. So just press S and make it smaller until it clips just a little bit with this here. So let it intersect a bit and then scale it on the Z axis only. By this, by doing this, we ensure that this here um, is touching with everything and holding it up. Let's scale it even more until right about here. Now I'm going to apply the scale. Next up I'm going to insert an edge loop, like right about here, then scale this face down. I'm going to do this, shade smooth, and it looks awful. We're going to apply the scale and it still looks awful, but a tiny bit different. <laughs> so. Let's add in another modifier. For this one, we're going to choose Bevel. And let's change the amount to be a lot smaller. Four segments will do again. Shade it smooth. And if this edge for some reason doesn't get detected because the angle doesn't meet the threshold, let's just say uh, like this, then you should just lower the angle threshold but don't make it too small, like 1 degree, or else you'll be seeing some banding over here. That is not nice to look at. 
you don't see it here, but let me just put on the matcap. You can see those lines here. That is not looking good. It doesn't get fixed by shading it smooth, so, so what you have to do is change this to the lowest number possible so that all the edges get selected, but don't go any lower than that. So only go as low as you need. Let's tab into edit mode, select the face, and extrude it upwards a bit. This is going to be the part that is illuminating our scene. Next up, select the bus, select the ring, and then the top part, and Control p object, and what that does is parenting everything to this top part, and that allows us to just move everything by just selecting that one thing. Next up, press A and H. Now we have hidden everything. Now it would be a good moment to save this. Bad joke, I know. So next up, let's shift A, cube, and scale it along the Y axis only. Make it sort of thin. Then duplicate it and move that up. So what we're going to do now is apply the scale for both of them and select those two faces, F3 and search for poke. Now we have triangles which is usually not really good but uh, we won't mind for now because we're going to bevel it anyways and that's going to fix the normals and ultimately it's going to look good. So once you've selected those two vertices just press S and scale them outwards until you get a thickness that you like. I'm liking this here for instance. Okay, now what we have to do is add in a bevel modifier and again I'm saying in 2.92 they've changed the limit method to angle um, which is usually good, which is what we want most, most of the time but in this particular case, like it's the first time I'm ever using it uh, we need to set it to none which is funny as I said, I've never used that before, like this, and now that I've changed it, I'm using it. Okay, now we can uh, select this, scale it on the z-axis by two times, and that is looking good already, let's apply the scale. And I can choose those two faces, you can choose to poke them, but I'm not going to poke them again. I'm going to just press I, move it in like so, and then scale it along the Y. You cannot just simply scale it because that will do this, it doesn't look good. So scale them along the Y axis, roughly like this, and that is good. Let's do the same thing with modifiers again, and you should be having a beveled object with the same bevel as this. So let's move this up. And next up we're going to create the the ball at the bottom, which is just an icosphere. So with the icosphere, what I want to tell you is that you shouldn't be going with the subdivisions over the value of 2, because this is already too smooth and will not look good. Uh, I've tested it out, it looks best with the subdivision of 2, but if it's really far away, you can maybe get away with 1 but uh, I suggest going with 2 as it's not that much geometry. So you'll have maybe a thousand to two thousand polygons more if you use two subdivisions. Um, so not that much. Again, it depends on what hardware you have, but this usually, even for cheap hardware, uh, like what I, have or what, what I had before, uh, it doesn't really impact performance too much. So what we can do now is just uh, apply the same bubble, but this time we really need to apply it because now we're going to boolean some stuff. So let us add in another cylinder, which we are going to cut out from this shape uh, in order to have a hole in it. For this one I'm going to choose 32 vertices, which is quite a lot, uh, which you would use if you were really close to it. but. Um, if you're looking at it from afar, like uh, for instance, like this distance, or even this, I would suggest going lower, lower like 24, 20, 16, maybe even 8. Um, really depends. Maybe 8 is too little, but 
about 16 is as low as you should go if you're looking at it from the from the distance but in this case I'm going to use 32. So I'm going to rotate it on the X by 90 degrees and scale it along the shift Y which basically um, scales it along every axis but the Y axis and I'm going to make it fairly small. Let me just see. The thing with this is that you really cannot get it to center in between two points as has uh, as you can see, if it goes through one, it's going to cut something in the middle and it doesn't look good. So just keep the rotation as it is. And we're going to work around it. Next up, let's add on a boolean modifier. And wait, first let us shade the smooth and apply the scale. As you can see, the shading is really bad and it's going to show on the, on the model. Once we boolean it, so let's go to the screen tab. I think it's the object data panel. Yes object data properties, normals and auto smooth. That is going to keep the corner sharp, but it's going to be around at the side. So we need to add on the boolean as I said and boolean this out of it, which immediately ruins, ruins the shading. We can take on auto smooth and that's going to fix it at least somewhat. We will later tweak this. First we have to go to the cylinder this orange tab, and then viewport display, and let's set it to bounce. As you can see, uh, it hides the mesh, but we can still move it around. So I think this is good for now. We will have to add on a bevel and see how that works. Let's add on four segments. Okay, we need to set the uh, angle threshold to something lower, let's just say 20. 20 is doing a fairly good job, let's go lower 16. 16 is doing an even better job, but I don't think I like it. Let's make it smaller. See it on the other side. What if we rotate it this bit? Would that change much? No, it wouldn't. So that is really the problem with icospheres, that you uh, that you cannot really center anything. But it doesn't look too bad. Let's just go with this and add on a weighted normal modifier, which is going to ultimately fix all of the shading issues and make this look good. So let's just apply the boolean. I know you usually don't do that because it's destructive, but in this case we do not have much of a chance or other options. So let's just roll with this. So my original design, uh, I made it so that they're really close together, roughly like so, which we are going to adjust later. But uh, first, let us duplicate this once, and then we just need to duplicate this one more time. But here, so we have five segments: three of the small ones and two in the middle with the big ones. So next up, the last thing we're going to do before uh, I'm going to record the second part of this tutorial in order for it to not be that long, is to add in a link and pull in out the rest of the holes. For that, we are going to use the same cylinder and cut it out fairly low. So you really want to go low. You could actually delete this and make our job easier in the long run. So let's just apply the bevel, add in a boolean, and boolean out this cylinder, cylinder 03. Now we need to go out to smooth. It basically fixes the issue a bit. We need to bevel it in order for this to catch light. This is really what sells the hole. Right now it's super sharp and there's no light being reflected from the edge and that usually doesn't really look good. Also the refraction is going to look awful. So we need to bevel this at all costs. If we bevel it with one segment, it's going to look ultra sharp because of the angle threshold, uh, which we cannot change that much in order for it to work. Maybe with your values it works, but usually when I do it, it doesn't work. 
So I suggest going at least to two segments, but I prefer four. Uh, because that gives the best look. And now we have shading issues again, which we can resolve by just going to uh, weighted normals and everything is fixed. But now there is another thing, let's just call this um, ornament S for small. And there is no hole at the top. So we could of course just uh, make another boolean cut over there, but the easiest thing to do is to just mirror the cutting object um, in reference to this thing. So just select the cylinder, go to mirror, and select Z. And now you cannot just pick it, so you need to find ornament S. And now you have that hole, which you can now apply. And you have basically done the job. Now we can just select this thing and press G and move it up until you get it over there. So apply the bevel, new thing, uh, not bevel, uh, boolean, the cylinder, bad shading, we're going to worry about this later, just add in the bevel, this is way too big. Just make it smaller. First segments, still too big. Let's make it a bit smaller. Something along these lines. Now, weighted normals. Weighted normals requires us to have auto smooth enabled. So just auto smooth and we good. Okay, so now since we have all of the holes punched out, we can just apply that again. So, boolean, apply and we can kick this away. So now save this and next up what we're going to do is add in the links. Well, let's just duplicate this before doing that. Okay, shift D one more time on this little guy and just place it roughly above. We're going to align it later. Shift A, add in a cube, at least that's what I did. Scale it down quite a lot. And scale it along the x-axis. Go into edit mode, select those two faces, press I, then F3 and search for bridge edge loops. Now, since we have that, we can scale this along the x even more. And that is not looking too bad. Now let's press number pad 1. And we can scale this more. Just want it to look good. We're going to worry about this later. Go into this um, ghosting mode, which is called X ray. And just align it. So press G and Z, move it up, and resize if needed. In this case. Does it intersect? Maybe a bit, so let's scale it up a bit more. What we could do is just get this, move this a bit, get this, move this a bit, and we good. So apply the scale, bevel this, we need to bevel this beforehand. We're later going to apply everything here um, and join them together. All of the objects, but uh, for now, we need to give this a separate bevel because uh, because once we join everything, uh, all the modifiers are going to uh, combine into one object, and that is going to mess up things if we don't apply a bevel beforehand. So now let's get this here and bring it up again. You have this line here. Which is not a bit blurred, but doesn't matter. You can just roughly align it. Duplicate this guy here. Bring it up. And now it's just a fact of, or a matter of aligning stuff, which I'm sure you can do on your own. So I'm just going to fast forward a bit and see you on the other side.
So now that we've done that, we can go out of X-ray mode and shift select all of those and press Ctrl J to join. Now when we select one, we have selected every one, every single one because they're all one object with one origin point. We can move them all together. Now we need to check. Okay, those two have not the same settings, so I'm just going to copy this value here for the bevel and paste that in here and that is going to reassure that I have the same thing, same goes for this just see if it messes up anything the shading or these bevels here, seemingly it doesn't, so it's fine now we can just select everything, I'm just pressing C and moving on miles over it, then pressing Ctrl J. Now everything has a bevel with the same amount, same amount of segments, and a weighted normals modifier, which is going to fix the shading for everything and keep it fixed. Now I'm just going to save this. Okay, so that is it for this part of the tutorial. In the next one, we're going to finish up the lamp. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.